Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. Hey guys, welcome to episode 126 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, and I'm so glad you've decided to spend a little bit of your day with me getting your weekly dose of proven practical tips and advice for membership site owners. I so appreciate you listening to the podcast. If you've been listening for a while, thank you so much. Hopefully you're subscribed so you never miss an episode, but if not, or if you are new to the show, get yourself into iTunes, Stitcher, whatever it is you listen to this podcast in, and hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss a single episode. And while you're there, why not give us a little review? I know it's a little too early in the episode to be fishing for those five stars, but hey, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that we deserve them. Give us that review. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know if it's been helpful to you in the growth of your own membership. On today's episode, I'm talking about launches or more specifically, what happens after the initial big launch of your membership. Now, in a lot of ways, the launch of your membership is some of the easiest marketing that you'll ever do because the fact that you're bringing something new to market comes with an inbuilt level of curiosity, of attention. It's an event and that type of marketing around an event taking place naturally enables you to drum up a lot of hype, a lot of buzz. However, what happens when that hype and that attention and that buzz dies down? Once your membership's been open for a month or so and all of those initial festivities, all of that concentrated marketing activity that you were doing during your launch, when that's all subsided, how do you get sales? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I've got some tips for how to keep those sales coming after your initial launch has finished and the buzz and the hype starts to die down. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn to the people who did join during your launch. So my first tip is to really, as the next stage, or essentially the first stage of your post-launch marketing for your membership, you really want to tap into the social proof of what's going on inside your fresh new membership from the guys who joined during your launch. So This is where you want to be getting some initial testimonials, where you want to be taking screenshots of any comments people are making in your community. Obviously, wants to all be positive comments. They should be legit comments as well, not stuff that you've made up or you bribed people to say about you. But if you think about it, when you first launched your membership, you didn't have any members to generate social proof from. Now that you do, you really want to tap into that. So get the screenshots, get the quotes, Get people to share details of any initial results or quick wins that they've been able to achieve since joining your membership. This is going to form a cornerstone of a lot of your activity in that initial period after your membership's launched because that helps you use an element you didn't have access to during your launch and that helps create that FOMO that people are missing out on. Someone didn't join you in your launch This is what they've missed out on. This is the camaraderie. These are the people. These are the results that they didn't get access to because they didn't join your membership. That can be extremely motivating. And there's also a safety factor too. You know, maybe someone was a little hesitant about joining such a brand new membership because it hadn't yet found its feet. It wasn't yet off the ground. But actually, once they see that other people are in there and that it's safe, you know, it's kind of like if everyone orders the same dish at a restaurant, Often you'll wait until one person's taking a bite for them to validate that, oh, actually, yes, this is quite tasty, or oh my God, this is disgusting. That kind of social proof and that validation that comes from other people could be a huge, huge part in driving the next wave of new members for your website. So that's tip number one, tap into social proof, get those quotes, get screenshots out, get testimonials, videos, get those initial members to share details themselves publicly, maybe even encourage them with an affiliate program so that they're getting a little kickback on any recommendations or any referrals they send your way. So tap into that social proof from members who joined you in your launch. Next tip is to actually ask those people who did join, why did you join? What was it about the marketing? What was it about the product that compelled you to take what essentially was a bit of a risk? You know, someone joining your membership during its formative weeks and months, they are taking a little bit of a risk. There's a risk 
that it's too early. There's not enough value. There's not enough content. There's a risk that you're an unknown quantity. You may be well known within your field, but people don't necessarily know how good a teacher you're going to be, how well you're going to show up and serve them inside your community. So they're taking a little bit of a risk. So you really want to know what was it that made you not only push through the normal objections that someone has to buying anything, but push you that little bit further to take a chance on a membership so early in its life. Because that is going to give you some really interesting angles of what you should focus on within your marketing, what you need to double down on. You know, if it turns out that the main reason people joined was because of certain features or because you were doing Facebook Live tours of your membership during your launch, then that's a good indicator that doing more of that stuff that works is what's going to help you in that next stage of driving sales. It's not only important to find out why people join, you also want to find out why people didn't join. So if you've been marketing your membership to your email list, maybe you even had a wait list of people who initially registered their interest in your forthcoming membership, chances are not everybody on that wait list and not everyone in your audience joined up. So you want to reach out to the people who didn't join, especially if they've signed up for a wait list in advance. Because those guys have expressed interest and then there's something that meant they haven't followed through on it. You want to find out why. Now, you don't want to approach this aggressively or with any level of hostility. And it's important to make clear to these people, I'm not asking you why you didn't join purely as the first stage of a conversation to try and pitch or try and sell to you. It's information gathering. Be transparent about why you're doing it. You want to know what it was that would have push them the distance to actually join your membership because that can help expose any gaps in your marketing strategy, maybe anything you're not quite getting right or that isn't hitting the mark. And I can pretty much guarantee that there will be some objections that you haven't thought of. Being able to identify those with direct feedback from people who haven't joined your membership, that's not only going to help you zero in on what you should focus on, what you need to improve. It's also going to give you specific language the words that people use to describe their buying decision or their decision not to buy, you should be utilizing that and incorporating it into your content. So if surveying people who didn't join helps you identify some objections, then if you want to address those objections on your sales page, use the language provided to you by people who told you they had those objections. Hopefully that makes sense. Quite often your audience will tell you how to sell to them, will tell you how to market to them. So you need to pay attention and utilize what they're actually giving you. So that's the second tip. Find out why people joined and importantly why they didn't join and use this to refine your ongoing marketing strategy. You also, when we're talking about non-joiners, you want to give them another bite of the apple. So just because someone who was on your wait list or on your email list didn't join during the initial launch period, that doesn't necessarily mean they didn't want to join. It may just be that they forgot or the timing just wasn't right. They were away on vacation and they planned to join when they got back, but they missed the cutoff for your launch offer or something like that. Give those guys another bite of the apple. If you were offering some sort of discount during your initial period, or maybe you were offering a trial, perhaps consider offering it again to certain people on your email list, or all the people on your email list, or the people on your wait list. Don't take it as read that the story is over with those guys and they're never going to join. Have another crack at them later on, a few weeks after that launch hype has died down, you can adjust how you market the membership to them when you go back to them for that second bite of the apple using the language that's come from non-joiners, from joiners, using a bit of social proof. Hey guys, here's what's going on. Here's what you're missing out on. Here's what people are already achieving in the past month. And guess what? That special offer that we had just for launching, because you've been an engaged member of our list for so long, we're going to give it to you guys again. We'll give you a second chance to put right what you got wrong. Maybe don't say that. Here's a trial offer. Here's a discount. Here's some other sort of intense incentive. You haven't missed the boat on joining the membership. So make sure you're giving those non-joiners another bite of the apple, especially people who are on your wait list who didn't open the emails. Try them again with different subject lines. Try a different angle. 
Fourth, you want to remarket to almost buyers. So you should have a Facebook pixel and certainly Google pixels and stuff like that on your website and on your sales page in order to track people who visit your sales page and people who actually join. Facebook will allow you to target people who visit your sales page but don't then go on to join. So they've obviously had enough interest to look at your sales page to check out what's on offer, but they just haven't followed through. Again, that doesn't always mean that they decided they didn't like what you were offering. It may just mean that they were at work, they didn't have their wallet or their purse with them, and then by the time they got home or they got in a a situation where they could sign up, they'd forgotten it. It slipped their mind. So remarket to those guys, use Facebook ads, use Google remarketing to make sure that you have that automatic follow-up through those advertising channels to people who started one or two steps of the buying process. You definitely want to be remarketing to people who you attract as having visited your sales page. You absolutely want to remarket to people who visited your sales page, then proceeded to go to your checkout but didn't complete that transaction. Those guys, you must, must, must remarket to. I guarantee that you will salvage some of those sales. So that's tip number four for getting sales after your initial membership launch. Remarket to those almost buyers, the people who nearly signed up during your launch period. And that's something you should be doing just on an ongoing basis anyway. It's a sort of campaign that you can just have ticking away in the background on Facebook that's not going to cost you very much money and that is probably going to be one of the most cost-effective Facebook remarketing campaigns you'll ever do for your membership. Abandoned checkouts are a gold mine for salvaging lost sales. Tip number five is to start getting a little more specific about content and individual features from your membership in your ongoing marketing once your launch is over. So one of the challenges when it comes to marketing a membership is that memberships comprise usually of lots of different things. But as soon as you start trying to describe all of those things and trying to cram in, you know, highlighting the fact that you have all these courses and you have this and we have that and we've got a community and we do member calls, the message starts getting a little muddled, starts getting a little harder. Having a single product that just encompasses loads of different things can be tricky, it can be challenging. And so quite often during the launch of your membership, you will be focusing on the whole. So your description of the features of your courses and all of that will probably be quite broad. Once that initial launch is out of the way, that's the time to start getting more specific, to start zeroing in on one of the courses so maybe you put into your social media marketing every week you do a little focus on a different course that you have inside your membership you have a promotional cycle for every new piece of content you're adding so people have already seen you talking about the bigger picture the whole your membership as a single product and that hasn't been enough to sway them then maybe getting specific and talking about particular courses or or maybe you know if you've got three or four key segments in your audience like with member site academy we have people who are planning launching building growing now for us to get specific we can either talk about individual courses which we do in our marketing or you can group together what your membership offers for people in your different segments so one week or maybe you do a facebook live and one of the days you do a facebook live you're talking about the content and the features of your membership that are tailored towards segment one of your audience the next week your marketing is all about segment two or what have you so once that initial launch is over and you're starting to move away from just talking about the product broadly that's when you need to start getting a little more specific, a little more tailored in drilling down to individual aspects of your membership and trying to see what sort of stuff resonates the best within different segments of your audience. So that's tip five. Start getting specific about the content and your features within your membership. Tip six is to plan more event marketing. So I often describe membership launches as event marketing. And what I mean by that is the launch itself is 
an event. It is a time-specific thing that is happening during which you're concentrating a lot of marketing activity with the aims of getting a lot of hype, a lot of buzz, a lot of attention, a lot of eyeballs on you during a specific window of time. Now, beyond that launch, your marketing becomes more ongoing. It becomes more consistent, more evergreen. But that doesn't mean that you can't bring event marketing back into the mix later on. And indeed, you should. You should be aiming to run several promotional events throughout the year. So these could be sales. These could be a a week during which you offer a free trial if you don't normally offer a trial. It could be a themed month where every week of that month, you are putting out content on a very specific theme or you're highlighting individual aspects of your membership that fit in with a particular theme. Music-based memberships can do this very well with musical themes. So December is Blues Month. January is Hard Rock Month. You know, those sorts of themes that are more timely based that allow you to use more event-esque marketing where you get to really drum up that hype and attention. You should have those in the mix with what you're doing. Now, most of what we're talking about here applies to an evergreen membership, a membership that's open all of the time. Memberships that close the doors and then open three or four times a year, they are essentially relying almost fully on event marketing. The event is a reopening of the doors. But you don't need to close your doors in order to be able to utilize event marketing. You can do promotions. You can run a big promo around the fact that your price is going up, or maybe that you have a particular special guest coming into the membership and you run a promotion about the limited period of time during which you can get into the membership and ask those guys questions. Lots of ways you can leverage event marketing to get the sort of attention and eyeballs on you that normally you only get during a membership launch. So that's tip six, make use of event marketing and have promotions scheduled regularly throughout the year. And they don't all have to be money off or sale based promotions. They can be themed. They can be things like challenges, web summit, could even be an actual live event. So many ways to use this type of marketing within the promotion of your membership. And finally, tip number seven for getting sales after your initial membership launch is to quickly establish a consistent undercurrent of slow burn organic marketing activity. You know, in all the memberships we've worked with, the most consistent, effective method of marketing is multi-touch marketing. By that, we mean putting out a lot of content into the world. We mean engaging with people in free Facebook groups, engaging with people across social media, nurturing your email list. Very rarely do you find that someone joining your membership does so in a strictly linear fashion. So they come to your website, opt in your email list, go through your email series and then join. More often than not, what we know to be true and what we observe across countless high-performing memberships is that it takes a lot of interactions, a lot of touches to build the relationship, establish your credibility and develop the trust that all makes for better quality members who stick around longer term. So content marketing is a big part of this. Blogging, podcasting, live video. We love Facebook groups as a good way of cultivating that almost entry-level community. Thinking about your email list, not just in terms of how you can have a high-pressured email sales funnel when someone first opts in, but how you can keep these guys engaged, how you can tailor your communications via email to them and make sure you're getting all those touches, all those interactions that help people really understand what your membership's about and really want to be a part of it. So that consistent level of slow burn marketing to raise your visibility, establish your credibility and make sure people understand that you have a membership, what it is and that you're always top of mind. That needs to be a consistent presence in your marketing strategy alongside things like the big promotions where you're making a lot of noise. So those are my seven top tips for getting sales after your initial membership launch period is over. Take advantage of the fact that you've got people now in your membership and tap into that social proof. Find out why people joined and more importantly why they didn't join to help you refine your marketing strategy. Give your non-joiners another bite of the apple and make sure that you're re-promoting the membership to anyone who was on your list, especially your waitlist, and didn't join during launch. 
remarket via the likes of Facebook and Google to people who almost bought, either visiting your sales page or abandoning their checkout. Get more specific about individual pieces of content and individual features in your membership. Start getting more specific about the individual components, content, and features in your membership because different parts of your membership will strike chords with different people. Plan more event marketing. Schedule in some promotions throughout the year that help you get all that attention and all those eyeballs on you in the same way that you did during your launch. And finally, get that consistent level of slow burn marketing activity ticking away nicely in the background to help raise your visibility, help make sure that product awareness is there and develop the relationship, trust and credibility with your audience that makes for better members. Hopefully this has been useful to you guys. Of course, these tips apply whether your membership launch just ended last week or whether it ended two or three years ago. If you're not doing any of the stuff that we talked about, you should look to add this sort of stuff into your membership marketing mix. I guarantee you, you'll see better results from it. So that's it from me for this week. I really do hope you found this useful. Let me know as always, reach out on social. Let me know what you thought of the episode or if you have any other tips or stuff that's worked for you. Best way to do that is inside our free Facebook group at talkmemberships.com. If you punch that into your browser, talkmemberships.com, that'll take you to our Facebook group. Or if you're on Facebook already, just search for Membership Mastermind and you should find the group. We've got about 6,000 plus membership site owners in there chatting about everything to do with memberships and that'll be a great place to let me know your thoughts on the episode or of course if you are an academy member let us know in the community over at membersiteacademy.com let me know if you've got any follow-up questions to anything we talked about on today's episode that's it from me thank you for spending some of your day with me hopefully i've made it worth your while i'll be back again next week with another installment of the membership guys podcast If you've enjoyed today's episode of the Membership Guides podcast, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Membersite Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.